Right. That's a bit better, maybe. Camera angle's going to be a bit rubbish now. I don't have the same bed, so I can't hold it up. But today, we're going to be dismantling a Toshiba Equiem L40. I just started a second ago, but I redid it because I realised I'd made a mistake already. First things first, you want to go on the bottom and remove the RAM cover. Now let's just see how my framing is. Yep. So, remove the RAM cover. There is five screws on that, and they are self-contained, can't come out. This is easiest way. Do, 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 do. Cover undone, we can proceed to take out a few things such as RAM just for now. We will undo the wireless cards aerial cables. If it wants to play a ball. And the reason why we have took this off first is because there is a screw under here which we need to take out to remove the keyboard. We'll just have them there. The two screws are known as key B F5. There's one immediately to the left of the RAM slots. And these screws should come out all the way. There is also a third F5 screw, which is immediately there, which is actually part of the plastics. And I can't tell if... yep. Zooming is probably going to be rubbish, but there's an F5 screw anyway. Mine's missing. I lost it when I took it apart last time. Duh. Uh, since we're here, we'll take off the other two covers. First for the hard drive. I'll take out my caddy because mine currently hasn't got hard drive in it and we will undo the little cover immediately behind the next cover which houses the VGA hookup cable now we'll turn it around and struggle to open up the keyboard this was a pain for me last time. And it looks like it's going to be this time as well. There's no magic to taking keyboards up. Some people can do them straight away, sometimes I struggle. It's nicer than when it was last time. Right, so typical, don't just yank it out, lift it up, pull it up a little, fold her over, and then push out the clips holding the keyboard in. Just coat it nicely, and so you don't lose your screws, stick them in your keyboard. Right, the next step is purely plastics. All plastics. So, we can now switch to the underside. And undo all the bottom screws. There are also two screws on the side back for the hinges. It's just battery. Battery in this camera is not very good, but I have no indication whether it's recording. Right, easiest way, turn it so the back faces you. Start with the two screws immediately on the outside. Now you should, however you organize your screws is up to you. What I will be doing is trying to make a semblance pattern 
of how they currently are immediately to the left of me on my desk and then using my memory uh, which is why I kind of got into trouble last time because my screwdriver knocked the damn screw but if you sort of make a screw pattern that's similar to the layout then you've got no you've got no worries there there is one screw here in with the hard drive whether you can quite see that or not again apologies as such but it's generally a talk through if you want you could even organize the screws on this case um, Get some space in right because that's another thing if you put the spacing kind of right then you'll get your screws kind of in the right position again yes you could uh, a lot of the screws are numbered so sort of f7 2.5s f7s f4 and that way you could make sure you put them back in the right way i think my way is a little bit more commando style putting it on a table and hoping no cat jumps up or that your memory forgets but to each the row right. helps if you have a magnetized screwdriver as well I always have Keyboard ones out, out, out. I hate working with non magnetized screwdrivers. It's got a bit, uh, a bit scrunched, but it's serviceable. Right, you've now got a set of screws in the hard drive there. There is two. There's actually three. So there's three screws in a hard drive bay that you need to take out because they hold in the plastics as well. And then after that, we will be switching to the top. But whilst we are here, there is a screw on the hard drive connection at hard drive monitor connector which is up to earth the monitor so we will undo that whilst we're here and we will undo the monitor connection and then that can just sit down near there and if memory now serves we should be able to uh, da, 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 da. yes sir. these the hinge covers unclip use your flat head if you want go from the side ever so slightly push one corner out actually the outer edge works better get a fingernail underneath and lift them up so outer edge screwdriver prop it up, fingernail, pull them up, and of course that's the slightly stiffer one, keep them organised, screwdriver down, right, always easier to remove a screen when it's facing up, lift it up, feed your wires through, screen removed, haven't opened my screen, don't believe I need to, no, I don't need to. Typical of all screens though, under the rubber feet, there'll be some screws, undo them. And then your typical pattern that I find, corks from the in to the outside, so it comes out and corks it all the way around. And that is your screen removed. Next, there are three screws along the top lip, which were under the lid, and then multiple screws on this top, heat shield and 
then once that is done you have access to the board so we will undo the first three I'll sit them next to the hinges so that I know well the hinge covers that I know which those three are next I will work on the heat shield these are also numbered F4 for size except one of them is in F5 and there is a silver screw? no that must have been on the uh, Sony Vaya so we'll undo all these put them in some semblance of order although I believe they're the exact same height screws but it helps when putting them back although these are all labelled F4 well, obviously except for the 1F5 be careful remember remove any ZIF cables there is one here you'll see it on your proper thing maybe not on mine because it's not set to, to zoom up so make sure you remove any ZIF cable and that way you won't snap it because boy isn't that one fun if I remember right the optical drive now slides out with a good pull down and that serves a step because I left it in last time we'll remove the PC card bleh, blanking plate We'll have a quick check, make sure I haven't missed any. Do -do -do -do. Don't appear to have. Check the top. Alright, now find a corner to work from. And pull. Pull it forward like most. Come off nicely. Sit it out the way. Now then, the motherboard. We will move it now. Speakers simply screwed in, cable fed through, connected here. The fan located obviously there that's what I'm here to replace the whole power jack your heat sink for your processor and processor hookup is under there one two three screws to hold the motherboard in your wireless button which in my case I don't need to remove however this is pretty straightforward like I say if you need your speakers enough unscrew unscrew pull out replace wireless button naff unscrew and screw tick replace pop a new one in screw it in fan uh, is what I'll be removing next you've got a screw here and a screw here that's it two screws and the cable is fed to the board there so I will work on that now Again, apologies if this isn't sort of like the standard of my other stripped down videos, but it's a fairly nice straightforward system. There's nothing too nasty underneath it, so and sometimes I find a talk through is just as good. But like I say, because it's nice and straightforward, there's nothing to worry. Lift up and to the left. Remove the power cable, fan is out. I cleaned this the last time I had it open, so I'm fine with that. We will unplug the speaker board. That saves us a job in a second. We will unconnect wireless board connector. Stick that down and out the way. And now it's one, two, and three three screws with F4 printed next to them which hold the motherboard in
As can be seen here is the CMOS battery. There's the main power button. And then if I remember, yep, it's lift up to the side and then out so that you can free the audio connections. With that done, you can now get at the thermal paste if you need to, which is probably what I will check once I have checked the power button, the power board rather, on mine. Let's move up. properly shall we so yep you can now have access to the underside of the board power connection for the battery if you need to replace it again you're able to replace the hard drive CD-ROM connection you can take off the heatsink which I believe I did I can't remember I don't think I put new thermal paste on mine but I did take it off the wireless card can come out quite easily as can the modem or bluetooth chip, I forget which one that is so this is the underside obviously because there's the ramp and then there's the overside where your screws are for your connections and which is what I need is that and then to remove the power cable you've got to undo the silver little screw there the silver screw there right at the end And if memory serves, it is easier to do as well. Yes, no, you've got to remove the connections for the monitor, which is what I'm going to do now. For my board. And for that, I will need... pair of pliers I use my grip nose ones or my long nose just because did I tighten them up too tight? who knows this might be a little bit It can seem a little stiff even when you've undone them loose to unscrew. So that's just normal. Just means you've got to sit there and undo them more than you normally would and this one's being a pain today. That's better. Sorry if this isn't on camera and boring, but I need the the angle. Right. Undo the two screws. The two screws have F3 written underneath them. Then from that, you can just pull it forward a little bit, and then as can be seen. You have access to the CD, uh, the CD, the back plate. And on the back plate, there are two little screws. Let's just. There we go. Two screws there. You get at them through the top. And then that lets you remove the power connection, which is what I'm going to do now. There is a little nip on the metal that holds the power connection in so that it doesn't rock about. So it basically ends up doing that. But then you can, well, if you saw it, I don't know, can't really see the angle again. It basically rocks a little bit and then comes out. Bubble wrap. Ooh. Oh, now we get our replacement part.
Oops, it's just supposed to be a brand new unit. So what's going to happen now is, I'm going to stop recording, I'm going to put this in, try and power the board first, see if I get any power lights, and then I'll probably film the reassembly, which will be just not as good. <laughs> so for the moment, rate, comment, subscribe, any questions, I know this hasn't been as good as the others, so if you're saying, I can't see what you were doing here, let me know, and I'll try and answer you, but it's, uh, it's a nice straightforward disassembly this. Loop me third out.